what do I mean when I ask or I tell people that you know one way or another you're going to pay for your education well simply that you're either you're either going to pay for it in terms of your um, the expenses you're going to take in terms of losing trades as you as you build up the kind of wealth of experience you require to, to be able to operate in the market or you're going to pay for your education through uh, a, you know an, an, an individual or, or a firm that delivers that both have their pros and cons I did a, an awful lot of self-study you know a lot of teaching uh, you know of, of myself and that was that was the, the the upside was that you know it kind of um, I was motivated and it spurred me on and I you know and I and I was driven to to actually do that. The downside, you know, in hindsight, you know, I, I'm sure I could have made um, quicker progress if I'd worked with the uh, if I'd worked with the right individuals. And you know, I've worked with a number of mentors throughout my career. Uh, some of them good, some of them not so much. But um, you know, you you live and learn. Um, whereas you know, a person may you know pay you know. Uh, Pay sums to to, a, to an individual or a firm for for education, um, and it's uh, you know that might help shortcut their um, the, you know their their kind of their their journey to to let's say to trading profitability. Um, working with either an individual or an education firm, well, that's the uh, you know that's the in terms of you know who should you be working with or why should you be working with them. Well, you know, I just um, I just suggest that uh, everybody does everybody does a bit of a uh, due diligence on that. It's like any good investment, you know, you should you should do your uh, do your uh, research beforehand. Um, the the internet has provided you know has opened up a, you know a whole um, spectrum of of kind of free resources for people to educate themselves with. But um, what you'll find is that if, for a person to go from a level of conscious incompetence to making the breakthrough to, to being consciously competent in kind of any endeavor whether you're uh, you know you're playing I don't know golf or football or you're swimming or you're driving a car or what have you uh, invariably that leap from kind of conscious incompetence to, to conscious competence invariably it, it only really happens when a person is working with a with a with a with a mentor it doesn't regard it doesn't matter what you're doing and so you know trading's trading's no different in that it's about finding a finding a, a good mentor who can actually sort of help you cross that uh, cross that divide how long do you think it takes to, to make a uh, a reasonable income from trading I think uh, there's there's an awful lot of variables that sort of play into that in terms of uh, lifestyle, the amount of time that you're expected to sort of uh, you know be involved with trading. Um, I would suggest to somebody that you know if they're doing it full time as an intraday trader, it might be it might take them two to four years to be able to experience to gain the kind of wealth of experience to be able to to be able to to deliver. Um, profits on a consistent basis okay you'll find people are consistent profitable all the time but actually to do it consistently actually takes takes you know a lot of time and dedication do you I think you have to accept some losses in the beginning yes yeah I, I, I think you do I think you do and, and and strangely enough in many respects in many respects actually starting out with with losses uh, it might sound a bit, a bit a bit strange, a bit perverse, but actually, it, it, for many people, it can be the best thing that ever happens to them. The reason being that it, it, if they start out with winning trades, and, and and a lot of people do, and there's a, there's a lot of reasons behind why that happens, but if they start out with winning trades, then they they become overconfident, they become euphoric, okay, they become complacent, okay, and so their position size gets bigger, their kind of risk management, you know, goes by the wayside because they think they're they think they're a fantastic trader. And then that's what happens, you know, as soon as you think you're great, you know, the market, that's when the market comes and slams dunks you. Whereas if you've had a few uh, losses to begin with, then, you know, you're in, in, a, in a position to, to kind of respect, um, respect the market. So even if you're taking losses, you know, as we've been talking about all day, it's about, you know, it's ensuring that those, those are risk managed losses. Those, those, two, those two rules I keep coming back to. Never ever trade without a stop loss. Okay, and uh, always uh, make sure that you never risk more than a small portion of your trading account on, on any one trade. So when you do take losses, it, it, it's, it's in a position to steer you rather than sink you. Okay, um, you know, if you're only risking one to two percent of, of your account on a, a trade, that means, you know, you can take an inordinate amount of, of losing trades, but still actually be able to learn and be able to trade. Whereas I see people who just completely over risk, over leverage their positions. You know, they might risk, they risk, you know, 60% of their account on their first trade and it goes against them. And then they risk 30% on the account trying to get back the 60% that they've lost. And there you go, within 
you know, within two, three trades that they're, they're done, okay? It should never, ever be in a position like that. Never, ever be in a position like that. Uh, what are my thoughts on, on mobile trading and, and, and apps that sort of uh, encourage mobile trading? Um, uh, generally, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a big fan of, of mobile trading. I, I, appreciate that it's, um, I appreciate that it's a kind of a little bit of a hot topic and, 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 and it makes for an exciting story for people to be able to tell. But generally, it, it, uh, I don't believe that it encourages the correct uh, professional approach to trading. So I, uh, I kind of tell a story about um, years ago, many years ago, I worked for one of the education firms for my sins, and it's uh, um, I was going to a, I was going to watch a, a woman give a the seminar, and uh, we were late to getting there, or you know, late departing, late going to give the seminar, and and kind of in the back of the the back of the cab, this woman was she was trying to give directions to the taxi driver, she was trying to uh, apply her makeup. And she was trying to uh, get an, uh, a, a kind of a, an internet connection so she could she could put her trade on and stuff. And uh, I kind of I was sat in the back watching her do this, and kind of sort of uh, you know I kind of sort of offered the question you know do do you think George Soros or Paul Tudor Jones or any of the really big you know traders do you think they kind of act you know like this you know do you think that's the way they they operate within the markets? But um, it uh, yeah, it fell on deaf ears. So um, uh, so for example, so she, she struggled to get her trades on. You know, she got them on in the end. They were late. Both of the trades failed before we'd even made it to do the seminar. And then that just kind of knocked her confidence to for delivering the seminar. So uh, I think it's um, yeah, it's it. I think if you if you have positions open, you know, and, and you uh, you know you're going to be out all day and you want a, a way to 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 check your position, that's fine. But to actually to, to you know, I've seen people sitting in coffee shops and pubs trying to trade on on iPads and, and laptops. And personally, I, I don't think that is the way. I personally don't think that's the way a world class trader would 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 operate. So um, it's not something that I would recommend to people.